George Lopez of ABC's George Lopez. That's right. I'm with my man, Harv Roman. I wake up dancing in Chicago, WLUW 88.7 FM. I see mismo. To the celebrity hotline we go. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we have finally made contact with George Lopez. Mr. Lopez, are you on the air? Hey, hello, Earth. Hi, how are you? Hey, man. Can you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you good. Good. You won't even say what telephone company you were dealing with. <laughs> it has been a mess trying to get a hold of you. Wow, It's man. been a mess. Uh, we had a 12 o'clock interview scheduled. It is 1227, and I tried using my personal calling card. I tried using this five-digit access thing. I, I, I tried everything. And I'm like, this guy's waiting for the call, and he's going to be mad if we don't um, get a hold of him. not paying the bills. That's what it is. Oh, we're paying the bills? <laughs> There's something wrong with, with, the, with the phone here. It's a multi-million dollar phone system. What can wow, you tell you? No, maybe the satellite, you know, maybe the... Uh... I don't know. It, it's funny because only two short years ago, we had the most generic equipment you would ever hope to find here at WCYC. Because, you know, it's college radio. Yeah, eight tracks and stuff. Exactly. Those two-track carts, you just punched in the machine, yeah. and then it worked. And about two years ago, we got a board of directors, we got all kinds of people and all kinds of money and all kinds of new equipment, and now it doesn't work. Everything used to work back then, now everything doesn't work. <laughs> what a hey, hey, it's progress, man. Uh, well, well, apparently so. <laughs> apparently so. You're in town coming soon. I was excited to hear about I'm that. I'm in town Tuesday. He's Are you coming to see me? I hope to. I hope to. I really would like to meet My you. favorite area. That's my favorite area. Well, I don't I don't know if... if, if um, it might be your favorite area. I was reading up on something that happened to you one of the first times that you were here in the city. You were confused to be something that you were not. I confused to be a valet. Is that a true story? Yeah. Somebody I won't even say the club. I was standing outside the club. And my friends, who are non-Latinos, they, they, they think that uh, I was making it up. That I was going for the sympathy. No, man. This guy drives up, takes his keys out, and goes, there you go. And, of course, you were coming to perform. I was coming to perform. Oh, well, you know, I you... Car. I took the car. I still drive it around. No. You have not been doing this comedy thing as long as people might think. Mm -mm. Um, before you decided to be... Well, I guess you were always funny, but before you decided that you could make a living at it, um, what were you doing? Uh, I was working in Van Nuys here in California at a factory. But what I did was I believed in myself and I, I went for it. And five short years later, I've done uh, over 25 uh, national television shows, including two weeks ago with IC, my eighth Arsenio. Wow. I mean, all I do is work, man. That's all I want to do. That's, this is what I'm doing. You know, very few people can get up in the morning and actually say they're doing something that they've always wanted to do. And I was one of those few people. But I decided what I wanted to do, and I did, and took whatever actions I had to do to be a stand-up. I mean, I didn't want to be a... You know, people say, well, why don't you want to be a doctor? I want to be a stand-up. Because as I started working, more of my beliefs about being positive and being Latino started coming out. I knew they were in there. But I needed the stage time and the, the and the access to for them to come out. So even when you were working at this um, Van Nuys place that you worked at, you still had it in the back of your mind that oh, yeah. you wanted to break out and, and do something. I some thought comedy? about it every day, man. I thought about it every day. You know, when you're doing something, when you when you want to do something and you know you should be doing it, it bothers you. It, it haunts you. And I wouldn't have been happy there. I would have been a guy making nine thirty-five for the next twenty years. And, and what was it that, that eventually just pushed you and you decided to jump in with both feet? I, I think the fact that uh, that uh, the boss's brother-in-law wanted my job. <laughs> the dude would always come up to me and say, so when is it that you're actually thinking about leaving? And he says, because... Uh, and then I found out that his brother-in-law wanted my job, so I told him, look, here. See this date right here? August, uh, uh, July 17th? This is when I'm leaving. Don't bother me anymore. And that was like four months before it. Um, those who I guess were close to you and advised you back then, um, what was their reaction? Because you probably had the card stacked against you already being 
a Latino who wanted to get into um, show business. Yeah, exactly, show business. Yeah, you know what it was was that uh, when I told you know they deprogrammed you, they, they, they did government work, so they they come in and you had to be deprogrammed by personnel where they didn't want you to tell any secrets about what they used in their machinery. So the lady says, so you're leaving us to work where? And I said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving to become a stand-up comedian. And she looked up at me, and her face was like, oh, okay. But then she said, yeah, we'll keep your job open for six months in case you want to come back. And I said, I ain't coming back. And even if I did come back, I wouldn't come back here. Now, when you were in school and everything else, were you one of those types who were considered class clowns, or did yeah. you play it straight? You know what? I was, and, and I regret that I was, because uh, I should have paid more attention in school, man. You know, you want to be cool, and you want to be, hey, man, George is funny. But George wasn't learning a lot, which I would have could use now, man. See, in 70, in 80, when I, when I was getting out of school, I thought that was cool to be like a, a bago and be funny. But now, when I'm out, I need all the things I could have learned in high school, man. That's why it's important for kids to stay in school because you think that it's only right there, those three years or four years, but you got a whole life ahead of you and what you learn in school is what you're going to take with you. Because, you know, you don't go to school when you're out of work. When you're working, you don't open a book. Maybe you read the paper. That's it. You had talked about before where people have to learn to make decisions for themselves as opposed to these little group decisions which is what comes out of you know the gang banging and the drug dealing that the young people are doing it's more or less a group decision and peer pressure um how are things now in la uh, last year when we talked it was a little bit following the rodney king verdict now here we are again it's the rodney king thing all again you're from la how do you see things that have changed maybe in the last half year or so well i, I think that uh there was still a lot of, a lot of uh, anger, but I think the anger is in the wrong place. You know, I, I think what offended me as a, as a Latino was that when, when the verdicts and they were having the trial, that they called the National Guard and they put up barriers and they put police on tactical alert. It's almost like if they were dealing with animals and not human beings. It's almost like if they say, well, if this verdict doesn't come out the way we planned it, the animals are going to run free and break out of the zoo. You know, it, 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 it offends me, man. It's almost like if you go to someone's house and they hide the good stuff from you because they know that you're coming over. Like if all of a sudden you're eating with paper plates and paper forks because they don't trust you. That's what, that's what I think it is. It, was, it offended me that they would not not think that we would we would riot just naturally that our instinct is to commit just to be violent so what uh, what was cool was that nobody did nobody rioted nobody looted and the national guard was in the street on tactical alert for nothing i think the first time it happened it was a spontaneous thing i don't think it was planned it was spontaneous and, and, the, and the four police officers were found innocent which in this trial two of them were guilty and i think the, the two that were guilty deserved to be guilty sergeant coon and uh and and Powell, those two, the other two guys, I mean, they were involved, but not to the degree that these two were. So this thing is from far from being over. They, they're having appeals, and I think that uh, as a gang, as, as gangs go, uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, peer pressure to be in a gang, and you know, a lot of times uh, maybe you don't want to be in it, but then you have trouble saying, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to be in this because you're going to think that you don't want to belong, and you're only going to do it because your friend is in it. But I tell you what, man, people are dying. And kids are losing their lives for for the fact that they can't make their own decisions, and I don't I don't feel that that's right. And a lot of times in Los Angeles, they say that being in a gang is like being in a family, but really think about it. I mean, uh, um, no, you only have one family, man. I don't I don't believe that gangs are like being in a family because they they they, they threaten people, they commit crimes, and. I, you know, I, I just don't see that. I think that, like I told you, it, it, it becomes with the individual. I was never in a gang, yet I had opportunities to be in gangs. All my friends were, and I didn't because I think that, and I was like uh, banned from hanging around with these guys. And these guys I grew up with. But unfortunately, when I look back and try to find these guys, three or four of them are dead. One's in, in jail. And, and, you know, they, these are guys who are 32 years old and don't have a car. They ride bikes. Late December back in 60.
many like me have um, tried to get back in contact with you after all these years when we're, we're seeing you now and things are blowing up for you, for you now the way you thought? Um, huh, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that, that would like to get in contact with me. You know, I've always kept kind of a, a close niche of friends and I consider you one of my friends from Chicago. I mean, we used to hang out and go eat and, hang, and go to the boys club and stuff. And, well, I definitely, when I come back to Chicago, I'd love to see you in person. I know it's been like 10 years, Harvey. It's been a long time, but you've got people now. Yeah, actually, I do, but I'll give you my number and then you can call me directly. I mean, it, it, was, it was interesting when we were trying to track you down originally, because I honestly read about this back in the summer. Sandra Bullock, and I said, Sandra Bullock's going to work for George Lopez. How cool is that? That's Miss Congeniality. And we tried, but there's a, there's a timing thing now where things have to be done so everything clicks just right, isn't there? Right. Well, you know, that, that's, that's part of the thing is that, uh, you know, people get paid money to kind of keep track of things and, and, and uh, um, you know, with the, with the show and you, you don't know who's real and who's not and, and, and you know, what people are good and, and, and things like that. So, I mean, uh, um, it's not that difficult to get in touch with me if you just, you know, would con you know go to the Warner Brothers production office, I think. Yeah, you just, you just have to be persistent and that's Absolutely. what I was. I mean, you call a few people, you wind up with a publicist and a manager, and then it turns out okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All they got to do is say Harv Roman, and they put them through. Oh, yeah. No problem. Um, and about the stand-up now, you're still involved with the stand-up comedy? or I'm involved in stand-up. You know, after these next three weeks, uh, I'm going to start hitting the road, and I, I plan to come to Chicago. And I just want everybody that's in Chicago that, uh, you know, hasn't seen me do stand-up before, or who has seen me do stand-up before, come and check me out. You know, the, f the funny thing is, the funny firm is no longer there, so when you come to the city, you're probably limited to, like, uh, Zanies or something like that. Well, you know what, we might try to do a little theater somewhere. That would be so cool. Rosemont Theater, five or 6,000 people. Yeah. All your closest friends watching you stand-up all over again. Be great. It'll be just like it was before. So you say now there's a 13-week commitment from ABC, so this means that we'll be able to see the show without it being canceled after only a couple episodes or something like that? Well, you know, uh, you know, the climate of television is so tough right now. And some shows, they pull off the air after one week, or, you know, some are kind of dead even before they hit the air. But this one, you know, did had a great Wednesday, and, and you got to take it week by week until, uh, uh, you know, you prove that uh, people want to see this show. So, kind of behind the scenes before we go, what, what is it like now working on a uh, situation comedy that seems like it's 22 minutes and, and that's it? I, mean, I would imagine there's a lot of work. You know what it is, Harvey? It just, it just consumes. I mean, it's something that I'm very passionate about and it's something that I wanted to do my whole life. And, and being a creator and a producer of the show and, and wanting it to succeed for all the right reasons of the fact that I think that a family like this should exist on TV, it just it just consumes my, my whole being, man. And, and I really... Being in New York right now, doing interviews, you know, I'll talk to whoever. I'm gonna feel like I'm running for a political office. How is it now working with um with kids? Uh, you probably have kids of your own now, don't you? Well, you don't have a daughter that'll be six on Tuesday. So she's probably gonna be father for some of the material, but it, it's got to be an interesting thing now. All of a sudden, you're working with um not just adult actors, but kid actors as well. You know, the kids. Are, you know what? We 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 did a we did a really uh, diligent job of of hiring the actors and. We've hired great actors. The people that watched the episode this week, 